Okay, I'm going to activate crown, move a card underneath, draw a card. Okay. Uh, we're going to block with rampart, and then I'm going to move to reactions. Um, yellow pummel. And then I'm going to play a sigil over the top. Uh, can I expose Chris the cross. elements on your rampart? <laughs> no, I don't think I can. I, I don't do, know. I do, and it fails, and then you block it up nicely. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Well, welcome to the reaction step. Sister video pod to the attack action podcast. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the state of flesh and blood for casual play. We've had a couple of recent announcements both of the ban slash no ban variety and fab 2.0. So we're going to kind of talk about um, the implications of those, our thoughts about those, and then how that all kind of ties in to um, what's essentially the lifeblood of any TCG, the casual side. So gentlemen, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm great. It's Friday. It's Friday, right? I kept thinking yesterday was Friday because Taylor thought it was Friday. And I was like, silly Taylor, it's Thursday. And then later in the day, I was like, how come Team Covenant's James White interview hasn't been pushed today? <laughs> and I was like, it's not It's not Friday. Ooh, so, did that happen today? I think it just came out. I haven't listened to it yet. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Everybody I'll go check that out. Mm-hmm. Probably, yeah. probably really Watch good. this and then check that out. Yeah. Priorities. Yeah. Charlie, and if you're short on time, do us not Team Covenant. Yeah. They have you know. a lot of viewers. Totally. Isaac, yeah, how are we, you? Uh, great. It's been raining a lot, which is very good for the earth and our local ecosystem and my homestead. And which means I can like, uh, you know, like play board games or Elden Ring or whatever, like guilt free. You know, it's hard to do those things where it's like sunny and gorgeous outside so i'm getting like a little taste of the winter that you know i kind of like so funny need every year <laughs> see so what people don't know is your house is like off the grid and your water supply is directly affected by the amount of rain so i thought you were going to say stuff like shower or flush your toilet <laughs> <laughs> so i got to flush my toilet this week it was awesome <laughs> He does so much better in here now. He doesn't need to flush the toilet. He's got Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> like it takes care of everything. <laughs> yeah, all all your life needs. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our new Elden Ring podcast. <laughs> <laughs> totally, everybody's playing it. Um, no, okay, I, I have water storage in several tanks, but in order to store enough um, to last all summer. Um, it's really nice if it rains in the winter. So you're a hoarder. In case that clears you up for anybody. You're a water hoarder. <laughs> yeah, as much as like, <laughs> you know, hunters and gatherers are hoarding things. That's fine. I'm I'm a water thief. In Southern California, we just take our water from anywhere else we can get. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're taking our water. Anyway, I get my water delivered by the city. It's a long... <laughs> story for another reaction step but now you know where everybody gets their water do you pick it up on your lawnmower (laughs) that tracks that would be cool because then it would have use it would have multiple uses and i would uh like it more than i do this topic's going great (laughs) totally we're all over the place so uh, guys, how have the recent announcements affected the casual players the most? So kind of historically, Flesh and Blood has really been pushing um, the competitive side of the game. And all events have been exclusively like competitive, whether or not that was their intention. Just, you know, early on, the lack of events really just meant like everybody's coming in trying to spike them, you know. Um, so how have these announcements, uh, kind of affected the, the rest of the players? Isaac, how about you start? Uh, sure. So, yeah, I I think in the past, 
maybe some events had been competitive just because there's such a demand for events, which is like a really good sign. You know, the fact that like skirmishes might be highly competitive just because everybody's like fiending for tournaments. So um, that, you know, maybe a sign of like healthy growth, but, you know, results in less casual style or level, you know, more relaxed atmospheres. Um, and this new... Just to me, there's a lot of takeaways from the no ban announcement or the postponed ban announcement or however you want to take it. But just my personal takeaway um, was that, you know, they said that Starvo is the deck to beat right now. And uh, I kind of like read a lot into that in that I think that you know, that it just sounds like they're coming from a competitive play, you know, stance, right? Like saying it's the deck to beat means like you're accepting that there's always kind of a deck to beat, which is generally true in TCGs, unfortunately, and that that is fine. And that the, uh, you know, top level competitive play can just be a lot of the, uh, you know, intelligent gameplay and like intricacies of the the mirror of whatever deck to beat there is, right? Um, which is, you know, I think a lot of professional players just kind of assume that, right? Like right now there's one or two best decks and you just have to play that deck and get really good at it. And, you know, there's, I mean, there's a lot to appreciate there for sure. But kind of part of the blowback or like repercussions of, um, you know, looking at it from this competitive standpoint is that, you know, everybody at Armory also has to play with Starvo for, like, the next month or two or whatever. And just in general, if that's kind of the cycle, right? Like, if Chain's the deck to beat, or if Starvo's the deck to beat, or, like, whatever it is, if you just say, like, well, that's the meta, and you should learn that deck and appreciate it in the mirror match and all that, um, then, you know, I think for casual players that, you know, kind of like to... uh you know, pick or craft their their side of the chessboard or whatever, you know, like like a bit of variety. Um, that's like a little bit disappointing because, you know, then, then it's just assumed that for like month, month or two month long stints in this game, you're just going to kind of be like sidelined. Um, and maybe that's like a bit too strong of an opinion from me or a bit too much reading into it. But that was... That was kind of like what I took um, took away from that, which is a bit in contrast to their recent announcement. But that was just my my first uh, my first take. I think I've talked long enough, Colin. You want to jump in here? Yeah, I, I I think that's a really good point because it was my opinion. My answer to this question was very different last week than it is this week because, as you were saying last week, it was like. LSS really just cares about competitive play and as someone who's kind of backing away from competitive play personally, um, you know, the hubbub about Starve, Starvo not being banned and people being unsure if they should test against it, <clears throat> I was kind of like, well, you know, if you want to be a pro player, like, you got you to gotta be good and you got to just be able to mm-hmm. roll with this because that's... That's what they're asking you to do. And, you know, that's, I don't know if that's fair, but to me, who was just like, I don't really care anymore. I'm just going to play what's fun and focus on that primarily. It was just like, okay, well, that, that that's where the incentive is. Um, but the announcement this week was like, oh, yeah, no, we're all about casual play, which I thought was really funny because it was like, it's never really been, the, like, it's, it's kind of always been implied, but they're, the way they incentivize playing is through com- competition and that's through prizing and that's through big events and other things like that, that, you know, I mean, they make really cool stuff that you can win and that really drives people to want to win them. And to do that, you got to play what's good and that <clears throat> incentivization can draw you from playing what you think is actually more fun and I think that is where, for me personally, I saw that was where things were getting a little, you know, disconnected, uh, you know, removing me from the fun of the game more often than I I liked. So it's really great to hear that, 
you know, they're not fully about competition. I think they came into the scene as like, we're the new big, you know, TCG, like you remember with like big events and cool prizing and all this stuff. But they also, you know, they need to have a kitchen table thing. And I think, you know, more and more we're going to see people who want that experience uh, to be the primary experience. And I think the just kind of the growing of the game is they had to grow it. They chose the competitive side to like give it that big kind of initial growth. And I think from here we're going to see um, hopefully some really interesting moves to make the the rest of the non-competitive scene just more fun and interesting and, you know, hopefully balanced for people to, to do some cool, fun stuff. Yeah. Um, both of you make great points and, you know, my little piggyback on, on both of those is just, you know, when you don't like, so two things, right? Like I think LSS has, you know, said or implied you know that casual or like more casual formats or events or whatever were kind of up to the community so then you know kind of as a whole uh commoner kind of took off a little bit um at least on the internet um but in the local scene that's really up to the store and the majority of your players like if the majority of your players are grinders or you have a a pretty vocal amount of people who want to you know get their practice in for the pro level events or whatever you know then it's it kind of behooves the store owner to listen to them or if their store owner isn't interested in doing like stuff outside of uh cnc or cc and blitz and that sort of thing then you're it's hard to get them to you know perhaps support something that you know you read on a forum or something you know what i mean so with them with lss now saying that it's commoner is an official format it makes it gives it a lot more legitimacy and so that then now uh local scenes can potentially be incentivized to run those as official formats and it it removes now the like you go to your local armory right and it's classic constructed and you're just like i'm gonna show up with like you know i don't know uh azalea you know or something you're just like i just want to shoot some people with arrows and then, you know, there's always those couple of folks who show up with like Starvo and get kind of like a weird amount of social pressure where you're like, come on, man, this is like Tuesday. I'm just trying to chill, you know, and there's that bit of friction where they're like, well, I'm trying to get my reps in, bro. And you're like, come on, man. Like, this is just Tuesday. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> but it's so, Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. So we're getting away, you know, with with more support by us for casual play, we get away from those like weird social um, interactions. Mm. I was excited to see at my last armory that no Starvo showed up and it was just kind of like everybody was tired of it and just, you know, we had a really good mix of everything. I did bring Viscera because I wanted to win those uh, coal foil auras. So, you know, I mean, I do like Viscera, but still I felt a little... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I think too, uh, and I know my community is different. I mean, I'm in LA, so we get people who come from all over the LA area to like any given armory. So it can feel like almost everybody is like a competitive player or you know, is a competitive player. We've got a bunch of people locally who are like in the top 20, you know, experience, um, in in the u.s and they're all really good players and they're all really nice people too you know but it can feel you know it you lose some of that like let's hang out and play games kind of thing that brought us all here i think um and then you know just kind of the hype of this game and everything that happened 
since, you know, I know at least us three started getting into it, you know, I, it just like, it was like momentum just carried us to where we are now, you know, it was just, you know, I never thought I would be someone who would want to like play in, you know, competitions for a game that I like. <laughs> um, yeah, same. So it's very, and, I, and I've thought about that a lot recently and it is, you know, they, their marketing, the way they just hyped everything up, it, it's always just been really good and it's felt really good. But I think we're reaching that critical point where there's going to be a split. There's going to have to be the people who are the best, you know, competitive players. And then there's going to be people who, you know, enjoy the game, want to play it regularly, but don't have the time or energy to like stay competitive at that level. Maybe, you, you know, you get enough to go to big events, you know, and you still do it, but you're, you know, you're not out here you know eight hours a day playing games Mm -hmm. trying to win nationals yeah and i think i think part of uh you know what we've seen has just been like you know a bit of growing pains for lss right like they're a small company and are trying to grow as the game grows so like having them or expecting them to like expand into like pve and casual play and grow this huge competitive scene may be like a bit much to ask all at the same time um but now i was like super happy to hear this um announcement that since now they've built this kind of competitive empire they you know are now like looking back um and trying to maybe like restructure or like reprioritize their casual base to some degree which is like as taylor uh introed is definitely the lifeblood you know of uh many games um and i would point out one thing that is you know it's this is like a this was a phenomenal announcement and like um like very readable 2.0 yeah it's not it's not like comprehensive rules 2.0 this is an article you can go read and enjoy. Um, but it's up to them to implement these changes. And I would argue that it's also just a bit up to the game design. Um, to I don't know, like, I guess, stay a healthy game. Because even if you implement commoner, if um, certain heroes are broken or just the power level of cards keeps ramping up at such a fast pace... Um, there'll still be like these, you know, huge imbalances in uh, what cards or heroes or whatever you can play to simply just have an engaging game, you know. So um, I, I think we've seen the power level increase dramatically from like Arcane Rising to, um, you know, up through Everfest or, you know, Monarch and Tales especially, um, which is fine. But, uh, you know, they're... They've been upping the the capabilities and the complexity and the power level of uh, the game, the cards, and the decks, which at kind of maybe an unsustainable pace. And it feels like they need to, you know, round everything out or introduce more things at like an equal power level in order to just like foster a, you know, like a casual scene and also a healthy competitive scene where you can kind of like play more than one or two things. Does that make sense? Is that fair? Yeah, I think so. I think it's tough too, you know, because it's like the game gets designed around uh, limited, right? A lot of sets have been, so you got to design for that. And you got to try to design also for the um, classic constructed meta. So, um, you know, there can just be like a suspended list for blitz i mean uh for commoner format and that sort of thing and um it's like pretty casual i want to know what common cards you're out of the gate suspending (laughs) totally i'm just saying in this theoretical world where where isaac has uh you know has postulated go ahead and ban um, seeds right away (laughs) yeah unban it reban it yeah 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 um No, I mean, I, I, I think, uh, you know, the suspended, you know, the idea that they are now admitting that, you know, these formats are not totally balanced, that, you know, Blitz was an afterthought that was created to allow people a way to play when 
product was scarce, but is not as fun as they'd hoped because of this kind of balance issues that they, I mean, they can't balance a game for limited, you know, constructed and blitz with the same cards. Like that's just you know not yeah. possible. So I was glad to see that they're going to have this suspended list. And I think it's fine in the sense that they're going to have more of a direct hand in saying, okay, this is basically the meta you can play with, you know, and figure, figure out what works given that these cards are taken out. And I'm sure other things will show up that are like, Oh, well that's totally busted, but they'll probably be with cards that people don't usually play as much. And I think that at least is more interesting um, for people to explore and gives a little bit more opportunity for self-expression and fun and jank and just all these things that might not have a place in the classic constructed meta, even on a local level. Although I do think you know there are people who are happy to bring their jank and just have fun playing it, even though it doesn't do well. But I, I find it hard to just lose constantly on a deck, even if I think it's fun. Uh, it's funny for like the first round and then the two rounds after that, you just, this kind of sucks, but yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, it, that reminds me of this point I wanted to make earlier too, when you were kind of talking about, um, kind of how we've all been swept up into this pivotal kind of point as players, right? Like we have the first pro tour, people are aspiring to get on that, you know, and be a part of it. And then there's like, you know, the rest of us, you know what I mean? And who either can, you know, can play at that level or perhaps like just don't have any, um, want to or have that flexibility in their life and their job and that sort of thing. But it's so it's like everybody, it seems like the whole community is trying to figure out where their place is in the game. You know, am I a limited player only? Do I only play a commoner? Um, do I want to be a pro player? Um, I'm just happy with going to road to nationals events, you know, et cetera. So um, for them to have more formats and for cards and things to be more accessible just means like more people can just get cozy and like find their place, you know, because I, I have definitely felt like that um, in 2022, like, well, what, who, who, who am I as a flesh and blood player? You know, what am I really trying to do? And, you know, et cetera, because it's like, it's a little bit challenging for me and Isaac because the like closest road to nationals is four to five hours away. You know what I mean? So, um, it takes an extra level of commitment for us to want and get to play at, at even just those levels, which have been deemed a casual event. You know, which is uh, preposterous, but um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, <laughs> that's just for rules enforcement purposes. Everyone knows that it's it's right. Cutthroat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I run into like weird situations on that topic, though, where it's like casual rules level at a high level competitive event just really doesn't doesn't work. But um, that's true. Yeah. About the uh, th thanks topic, police. <laughs> Uh, about the uh the announcement i do really appreciate how uh <laughs> how um you know how transparent like this article was right like they talk about you know oh we we would like to uh revisit these casual formats and grow the game in that regard and we understand that you know blitz has had some balance issues because it wasn't really created to be such a big format and you know all these things like the all the language of the whole uh um, you know, the whole article was just really like felt really sincere and transparent, which their their announcements do often. So it was very, uh, very much appreciated. Except when they're totally unclear and keep changing. <laughs> but that's all I'll say about that. <laughs> totally. I, I said most of the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, it's great to see that there is a significant push towards accessibility and they did this on numerous fronts, which I think pretty much everyone can appreciate whether or not they have feelings about certain aspects of them. But I think generally the 
kind of cleaning up of UPF, even though, I mean, I've only played it once. I don't know how big of a fan base that format has, but I could see the merits off of my one play. Uh, you know, coming at Commoner is just, I mean, people have been kind of arguing back and forth, like what Commoner means. So it's nice just to have a defined format. You know, the, the two rares in the inventory and allowing rare heroes, I think, was a a nice call. And then just looking at, like, common cards, like, I was already checking it out. It's like, you have to do some interesting stuff to, to make a good deck, I think. So I think that opens up a lot of <clears throat> opportunity for, uh, you know, hopefully stores do events. And I think, you know, the uh, having it as a selectable thing in gem is like, oh, yeah, this is a commoner armory J- just in itself makes it a possibility and people will be excited yeah. to do it. And I'm excited yep. to, like, make a deck and hopefully a new player is there. And I'm just like, here, just take this deck home because I literally have, like, a hundred other copies of all these cards. So, yeah, um, Let's, it would be sick to be like a commoner terror, you know? <laughs> i'm just like really good at commoner you know we can start a third (laughs) podcast you know just a commoner only totally (laughs) i'm trying to think of what the clever name would be for that but i can't do it on the spot (laughs) yeah totally Uh, i can't either we'll we'll wait in silence until you do okay (laughs) i mean uh so in the kind of you know commoner vein I don't know how many times we can say that here, but if you have a, a bitchin' commoner deck, leave it. Leave a link in the uh, comments below. We'd love to see it. Uh, you know, start it up. Where's the YouTube, the commoner only YouTube page? You know, give me uh, the sideboard guide, etc. I've got it. It's called Rare Form, a commoner only podcast. <laughs> Boom! Nice. Trademark that. <laughs> I already bought the URL. <laughs> uh, Sweet. Yeah, totally. I, I'm I'm really excited to see people's commoner list. And, you know, we, even in our Discord, we tried a little event with commoner only. I think we, did we just we allow allowed all, rares. all rares? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I in, even in that, it was apparent that some rares are just very good and kind of defining for classes, which is great, but also, you know, it makes playing other classes less viable. So I think restricting the actual card pool to common is going to be, it's going to be weird and tough, but I'm excited to, to try out some new hero. I was trying, you know, I was just trying to look at like, who's got the best common card pool. And I don't know who it is yet, but I think, you know, there's going to be, I mean, he's probably going to be a talented hero just because they have more cards to work with. Yeah. The probably one of the rune blades. I mean, it's just gonna be <laughs> it's Briar. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> Briar, Chain, Viserai, uh, Bravo. Those are the four best common heroes, guaranteed. Yeah, sadly, I don't think Kano can handle <laughs> just the common only. Yeah, what do you play? Index. Yeah. <laughs> I, I look at five cards and put four of them on the bottom and then i pass my turn yeah and i pass my turn this was worth a red slot (laughs) good thing i played it at instant speed on your turn (laughs) totally i'll play pry also cool look at your hand sweet 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 sweet. okay good hand yeah two tempo (laughs) (laughs) nice shout out to our uh, recent podcast episode. So what are your guys' thoughts on how they can improve beyond what they've already done for the casual side of the game? Um, well, I think you brought up Taylor um, in our prep discussion about how the lore in this game is like pretty rich um, and they've, you know, they've made a pretty good effort to have good lore and, um, you know, just different outlets for that, um, I think would be enjoyable. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Like if there's a more of a connection with the hero or cards you're playing to the lore, like, you know, that makes for cool moments. You know what I mean? Like the other day I was playing our buddy Zane, shout out to Zane. And I almost had like a turn. I was playing chain 
where I could have, I just didn't have the resources for it, but it was like going to be ban play soul reaping, banish eclipse off of it, and then get to play eclipse in the same turn and summon Ursa. So you just do this like thematic thing where you do like all of his specializations and you get uh chain's best friend Ursa on the board, you know, like, um, that's my boy. <laughs> yeah. But so if you have a more of a connection to the lore of the hero and the game and stuff, you can have kind of more exciting moments when you play the cards, you know? Um, How do you feel about the classic battles uh, kind of product line that they're starting in in that regard in, as far as like lore presentation? Sick. It's so cool. I mean, I was thinking about it today. Um, obviously in prep for this. So I was a great product to help um, people get into the game. C, if it goes off of the recent, we're skipping B um, <laughs> cause it's bullshit. Uh, if you go right, if you go and look at the lore article, whatever it is, Morlock Hill or, or whatever, you know, and uh, spoiler for that, if you haven't read it, which you could pause, go read it. Okay, now you're back. Great, thank you. Um, at the end, Bolton's like, we need more kingdoms to join or whatever, you know? So maybe Dorinthia goes to the Savage Lands, meets Reinhardt, they fight, right? And then, you know, depending on who wins, it doesn't matter. But like Dorinthia's like, you're such a great warrior. Come fight with us. Or Reinar's like, you're a great warrior. I will join you, you know, like if that's the lore within that book to tie into like this whole huge thing. Awesome. Dorinthia and Reinar, best friends after a battle. It's like me and Isaac all over again. <laughs> that's a buddy comedy I would, I would watch. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. It's like, like, in casual it's like Hulk formats. and Thor. Basically it's like Hulk and Thor like being <laughs> good friends, but it's Dory, definitely Dory and but Reinar. fighting all the time. Yeah. A little more violent, but you know, that's fine. And it, yeah, in casual formats, it's like you really have the flexibility or like, you know, room to appreciate, you know, a variety of characters and their different Theme. backgrounds and all yeah. that kind of thing. You don't um, just have to purchase one specific deck. Um, about the battle packs or whatever boxes, the one thing I hope, because games have done this in the past where they, they release something like this and it has like two of a chase card and you have to like buy two of them to get this card. If you need, you know, need get the third copy to play it in your freaking competitive deck or whatever, which that has not been LSS's, uh, you know, strategy or stance yet. But, um, just when I saw that announcement, I was like, you know, just hoping they didn't do that. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see about that. But I do think it is an interesting format, you know, to introduce people to the game. It kind of looks more like a board game setup where it comes with like the two player mat, you know, like you could just have this and play this if it's like your favorite matchup. Mm -hmm. I hope it's very balanced. I think that the matchup they chose to start is a pretty good one because it has some nuance to it and different play styles and you know despite the ptsd it gives me personally uh from just <laughs> losing as reinar to dorinthia all the time when i was learning to <laughs> well play. they're they're new heroes with new abilities right that's true we don't so even like, know what reinar's is yet so totally he might not even have you know maybe he has a muddy romping club you know and that's like a little different also since like Dorinthia has green fist. He just punches you in the face. <laughs> That'd be sweet. Um, fist. <laughs> leopard skin piano wire. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's an assassin. <laughs> oh, I like this play rather than him being like hit you with six power attacks. He's like uh, sneaking up behind you like the predator. Anyway, um, so there's this huge part of the game that uh, matters very little and matters even less as time goes on, and that's the XP leaderboards. So, like, anybody who joins 
tomorrow has zero XP and can never hope to catch up to whomever in XP, right? So they have like 90 day XP, which is still like maybe a thing for people to like worry about, but then accessibility in your area becomes an issue. So this is like a really cool thing that they have, but this is my idea to improve upon the XP leaderboards is that then you tie your XP since Jim already is like uh, gathering data on what hero is being played. We can also gather the data on the amount of XP that each hero in each class has so that then we would have leaderboards for all of the heroes who have the most XP, right? And so then the idea would be that in the like Discord channels or Facebook groups or whatever, you now have this community all based around, you know, data doll. And you're trying to like race up the ladder, KO or whatever, you know? And so you like communicate like, okay, there's this event this weekend or whatever. And it's data doll weekend. And we all go out and we try to get as many wins with data doll. So it doesn't matter like, I mean, it does matter. You like would have to win to get the experience points, you know, but, but then you're trying at your like event to just get a win and be a part of that community to help that hero in some like arbitrary gamed fashion. Right. So then, uh, I think that helps out people too, who like maybe go like three, three in a like road to nat. Well, I guess those are now ELO rated or whatever, but you know, you know what I'm saying? Like if you're, if you're not top eighting an event, you still have this uh, like silver lining that you can be a part of too, you know, and then go check afterwards and be like, sick. I, I helped like nine of those experience points or whatever, you know? Totally. Like your, your clan, your camp, you know, you <laughs> like your team. Um, love this idea, you know, Thank because you, you uh, yeah, it just like ticks so many boxes, you know, because I would like love to play, you know, with Team Azalea and we're just like, it doesn't really matter if I like win a tournament or like you said, go three and three or whatever. It's like I, uh, you know, contributed to our team, you know, pulling ahead of, you know, Reinar and Dash or whatever in this, mm -hmm. whatever. I, you know, they would have to polish the you know competitive system or the ranking systems or whatever um but you know it, it, would, it would be it would take a lot of boxes that are like missing from the game at the moment yeah. so i think that's a good idea yeah it seems like an interesting community kind of building you know spin on the whole xp thing which i do agree is just kind of it's somewhat arbitrary and also you know useless can, yeah yeah you know, it it can be useless and it, it's like if i went to five armories a week i probably would have much more experience than i do but i don't so does that make me a worse player or a less you know valued player of of this game and it can feel like that and i think that's kind of like the negative side of it so being able to you know kind of have your have the thing that you're really excited about and brings you joy in playing this game and to contribute as a community to you know some kind of goal they'd have to figure out like you'd have to get something like something would have to happen when you hit a certain thir certain level um new card yeah you know maybe they release yeah, a know. you know special commemorative thing and everybody who played that hero gets some you know like something like that could be really exciting and people you know, I, as we've seen, people are very driven by the cool promos that are yeah. coming out. So if they said that they would give, you know, a unique promo to everybody who contributed like X amount of XP to a certain hero's rise in the, you know, I don't know what they would call it. It's not legend, but whatever. But yeah, I. I mean, I'd be down. I, let's do it. Let's go play more Reinar. I miss playing Reinar. It'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, to... totally. And, and you know, the, I came up with this because you think of like, you know, people who are just like, I've seen complaints who have been like, well, the hero I really love, it's really terrible to play right now. 
And so why would I do it? I don't get anything out of it except for like, you know, getting to play the cards I like the best and maybe just like not performing that well. But if you were contributing to kind of like the community that you're a part of, um, you know, that mean that maybe means like people who are like diehard uh Dorinthia, Zalia, Dash fans uh can you know continue to play that and you know feel like they're making some progress somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. And that goes with uh like I was talking about, it's up to LSS to not just like power ramp so many characters and cards just out of viability. You know, and I'm not talking about competitive viability, just like playable viability. You know, I think that goes kind of hand in hand with that. Um, and yeah, I it it would be really nice to uh, you know play the hero you love and have some sort of meaning to it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I wonder too if it would be possible to have it as like. Um, you know, different new leaderboards for those heroes for per player too. Like all of a sudden, you know, or like Isaac's number three best Azalea player in the world based on XP. You know, um, maybe that makes it then a, maybe a little too competitive and like kills the spirit of the idea. But you know, that could be cool too. That's a lot. Yeah, I- Isaac is number one <laughs> Azalea player. In the world, I'm just saying it's know. a big game. It's there, a big there's world. Some good, you there's know, some good. There's some good players out there. Number one <laughs> in our hearts, always. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, but I mean, we can't all agree, right? That, like the XP system doesn't work because it. If you have XP like 90 day XP tied to a tournament invite or something, it turns armories into a competitive atmosphere. You know, which is like contrary with the goals they've laid out here. They also maybe because of um covid which i like really don't blame them but they made it so you earn xp on like online tournaments which is like great for players with less accessibility you know like taylor and i um or you know countries in harsher lockdown i i totally get it but like then in practice now it's just like that turns into if you have more free time and money and can just grind XP or, you know, armories or whatever, then it just makes this weird, um, it creates all these weird dynamics, you know, like armories are spiked, you know, players that play for nine hours a day on their computer are highest ranked in the world, you know, and I, if, if you play more and win more, you should get some credit or something, but it just like, it's not, it's not working out with the current system. Yep. Which is why the ELO announcement was also a welcome one, just making Mm -hmm. more opportunity for people to get ELO scores. You know, previously it was just callings and above. So now that they're all the way down to pro quests and road to Nats, while that might, you know, very, I'm very skeptical. Like it might affect people, you know, behavior in those, uh, events i think in general it just allows more people to experience that side and kind of get you know some validation for that you know experience beyond just like oh i won or i lost you know it's like no over like yeah a long period of time this is how well i've performed and i can see that like i've gotten better you know like just if your your xp is only gonna ever go up you know your 90 day won't because it's gonna reset but like your total xp is always only ever going to go up so it's no actual determination of how good of a player you are it's just how many games you've played and how many of those you've actually won which i guess is how good you are but it doesn't reflect anything of the skill Mm -hmm. tied to that so having elo available to more people and a lot more events well it does scale based on the size and uh the you know competitive level of that event I think is just really neat and hopefully kind of allows us to move beyond this XP thing because I think it has been problematic in, in the way, and it's, again, it's a question of incentivization. Like if the incentive is to 
gain a lot of XP, then the incentive, you know, then your the best thing for you to do is play as many events as you can, bring the best deck that's in the meta right now, and just like hammer on anybody who shows up. And that, yeah, you know, again, it makes it less yeah, fun. For the you. newer, the better. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's your first game? Cool. I'm going to be playing Starvo, and <laughs> you, you can concede now if you want. No, you can't say that. It's implied, though. When you <laughs> flip over Starvo, and it's he, you actually can't flip over Starvo because he's just on both sides. Well, I guess it, oh, true. Down, downfall. If you have the regular that. one, but how many people who play Starvo use the regular version of the card? <laughs> Not very many. Uh yeah. Uh, yeah. So those are my thoughts. Yeah. Do you, do you guys have, uh, anything else you want to touch on, um, before we get out of here? Um, just to respond to Collins. Um, I do think there is a, a tiny concern that, um, ELO rate ratings in road to nuts, et cetera, will maybe disincentivize some competitive players for joining, which I understand because, Sometimes I like to play like a jankier deck or a new idea at like a road to nuts or a pro quest. I don't go to every single one like with my best deck, super well prepared. And this kind of thing may disincentivize that. But um, I do think that this is overall a really good thing because I think it's really cool that, um, you know, a player that doesn't go to the pro quest can still like play against a famous player. And if they manage to beat them, then they get some ELO rating. I think that's very cool. And it just broadens, you know, it gives everybody, um, I don't know, a shot at that moment. Um, and I do think pro quest and road to nuts are like per competitive events. And it's weird that they haven't been treated as such. So I think that, <laughs> like ELO ratings is fine because they are, you know, it's how you yeah. get to the pro tour. So it should be a yeah. competitive level event with like rules and ELO ratings. Um, and I know it sucks for certain individuals that their ELO may be on the line when they go to play and might make it less relaxed, but for, you know, everyone else, I think that it's like the correct level, right. Or the correct, like, in statement or yeah. whatever. I think the whole thing with the, the casual level event is mostly like the access to judges qualified to run. Yeah. The, the you know, professional level. And yeah. I think that's the only reason. And they don't want to give anyone the ability to kind of mess up someone's chances by, you know, putting on too harsh of a, uh, you know, penalty, in certain cases, especially because they, they are, they're like filtering systems to the highest level of yeah. play, yep. but it's that, you know, Willy Wonka style of like, but every, anyone could do it. You know, if you, if you go and you win, like you're going to go to nationals and that, that's the part I think that has contributed to people like me being like, I could do it. I could like, maybe I could go and win. And, you know, everyone just feels the same going there. So it's like, it is exciting in that way. So I don't, I don't think it's like, them you know not realizing the importance of them i think it's just more of a you know logistical thing yeah. as we get more judges maybe that changes but it's also like they want those to be open to people who may not be the the most experienced or you know whatever so um the only other thing I wanted to touch on, which we, I don't know how we didn't talk about it, was the PVE situation. Yes, me too. Oh, right. I want yeah. to talk about that. Because how did we miss that? It's like simultaneously the most exciting and also like kind of frustrating part because it's like we're working on it, but there's like it sounds like they are just starting to work on it. So <laughs> I I don't have high hopes for when it when it will come out, but I am very excited at the idea of it and. The, the fact that they're going for like a campaign style thing also sounds very intriguing. So, you know, that in itself, I think, opens a lot of possibilities for people just to play amongst themselves. You know, having if you can make an experience that is like as rewarding to play without any other incentive than just the experience alone, I think it's going to be a huge hit amongst 
pretty much every level of player because in the end we all love to play this game and being able to kind of experience it in many different ways seems to be uh, really exciting right now yeah 100 percent, and it makes it like you know if you think about the current lore happening in flesh and blood there's like a gigantic war happening you know and uh me like uh you know shooting arrows into starvo like has nothing to do with that you know what i mean it's just like whatever but if then pve more reflects that that's way cooler if we get to be dorinthia on morlock or mylock hill and fight the evil dude who uh spoiler go read the article okay good you're back who kills minerva like uh freaking awesome you know what i mean like that would be cool and then the necromancer brings minerva back and then just throws her at the bad guy totally there's gonna be a necromancer which is pretty cool although we've had a lot of like dark characters like that but necromancer is a cool class it's like a nice necromancer that's like <laughs> yeah totally oh, yeah. dude yeah totally it can be dark and nice he's a light and he's a light necromancer <laughs> Like the zombies are all like very kind and go do charitable works. Totally, dude. Goths are people too. You They're know like what I mean? The sexy vampire version of the undead. <laughs> They're just like, oh, cool. Like, you're just kind of young and pale. Cool. <laughs> totally. Oh, they fine. Undead, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm really excited for PV because as much as I love competitive play, um, I also love, uh, like casual style play right like you know arkham horror or marvel champions or something where you can just like relax and not feel like any frustration or competition or whatever and you're just like on the same side completing a goal together i think is like a very valuable thing in games and i Mm -hmm. like i hate that it's gonna take them a while but i like that pve like they're it sounds like they're making a a big effort to make it an actual uh, game, like a quality game mm-hmm. instead of just kind of like this side thing that they released and like, isn't very good, but if people want, they can play like if it's an actual well-designed PV campaign for a team of heroes, I think um, that'll be awesome because then, you know, these like these decks or these heroes, you know, like Azalea or, you know kano or prism or whoever your main is um that you've like poured so much love into learning their cards and their intricacies and all that then you can also appreciate that you know on a team with your fellow heroes playing a board game together and uh you know it'll be a really good outlet for um you know for more lore for everybody that's into that it's just it's it's so good there's like so many aspects i'll really really enjoy about this yeah yeah totally it's a a uh, big, a big step, I think, for a lot of people, you know, and for us, but, you know, because we were talking earlier too about how uh, after we like kind of were on the grind for the first uh, ProQuest season, how it was nice to have like kind of something a little bit more casual, like Blitz, to then like, you know, dick around with, you know. But if we could have that kind of always in our back pocket with PVE, that would be uh, excellent. Totally. And you'll still get frustrated, but you'll all be frustrated together at the game. Yeah. Not, you know, yeah. At each other or yourself, which, and I'm curious too, if they'll do any kind of like, you know, uh, formalized approach to like balancing your, party or whatever you know kind of like a D mm. group where you want a little bit of everybody or if it's just going to be free for all and you're just like let's just all lexis <laughs> just yeah, everybody's yeah. lexi and you know the story of that doesn't actually matter but it, it could be interesting <laughs> if they limited it to like one uh like one of hero. each hero you know yeah. so you couldn't have duplicates which could be interesting i mean it would be cool though if you can have lexi and azalea on the same team or whatever you know, well, like I'm obviously saying, like, unique person, not a class. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y- unique person for sure. Yeah, probably also like anything that has a specific name like that, like old you. him and young him together at last. <laughs> it's my son, young him. <laughs> <laughs> 
or there's some sort of weird time paradox where totally, he's yeah. like hanging out with his younger self, you know? Nice. Yeah. And See, the, h- hire us already for the <laughs> story team. Okay. We got ideas. Totally. They could print a lot of diversity just into, you know, like some bosses or henchmen or whatever it could be like, weak to ranged attacks or to arcane damage oh, or yeah. you know they yeah. can like incentivize diversity like fairly easily because when designing a campaign you're working outside the bounds of like having to have a competitively balanced game you know mm-hmm. so i just thought in my head i was like what if they they come back with pve and they're just like it's gloomhaven <laughs> but with flesh <laughs> and blood cards totally that like, would be just sick. Tape, taped over the box <laughs> I could go do that right now. Flesh I, and Blood Haven. <laughs> I, I would still play it. It sounds funny, actually. <laughs> totally. Gloomhaven is one of the greatest games of all time. Is it still number one on Board Game Geek? I have no idea. But in my heart, Probably. just like Isaac's number three best Azalea <laughs> player. I just want to know who the other two in your heart are. <laughs> well, you're going to have to tune in to more episodes of the reaction step to find out yeah next time taylor's top 10 everything list (laughs) measured by heart strings (laughs) totally i got a big heart so it's gonna be a big episode (laughs) it's a it's a marathon stream (laughs) <laughs> totally we could do an episode where we just do top five lists on every topic we could think of under the sun like a you know I'm top not, five citrus like fruits. a rorschach test kind of deal <laughs> i have that i have that ailment where if you ask me my favorite kind of something i can't think of a single version of it anymore <laughs> <laughs> this is not gonna be it's good. not gonna go well that's now. a that's an ailment eh? <laughs> yeah that's hilarious it's a, yeah it's a special skill i don't have <laughs> Cool. Uh, All right. That's been our episode. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. Check out all of our socials down below. Um, Yeah. And I hope you all have a great day. You're much appreciated. And we'll see you next time. See you. Goodbye. Goodbye.